Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to our first Facebook Live. We'll give it a couple minutes and hey everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live at Mountain Yoga. We'll give it a couple minutes and let people get online and start to get their things together. If you haven't done so already, make sure you've got your mat, any other props you would like. A blanket is always great to have. I love an eye mask for Shavasana. If you have a bolster, you can also use a cushion from your couch or a pillow. <laughs> and in case you want a strap, you can use a belt, a tie, a towel, jeans, anything like that. So feel free to grab something you can use for a strap should be needed. And then we'll all start to find our way to a nice comfortable seat. So sit on the edge of that blanket and start to roll your pelvis forward. Start to bring those sitting bones to the edge of the blanket as you gently take some of that flesh out from under those sitting bones. Lightly draw your belly and find a little lift to your chest and bring the shoulders up to your ears. Take them back behind you and release them down. Do that a couple times. Take those shoulders up and back and release them down. We'll all do that one more time. And exhale, release the shoulders down. Take a little shake of your elbows. Find a nice place on your lap for your hands to lie. Ever so gently draw the chin in towards your chest and lengthen through the length, the crown of your head. Just find a little length up through your spine. And here I invite you to start settling in and we'll start to find our breath. Start to engage that ujjayi breath, bringing in a little bit of a constriction into your throat, finding your audible breath. And we'll place one hand on our belly as we start to find some belly breaths. As you inhale, fill your belly and make your belly get big. And as you exhale, release that belly and draw your belly button to your spine. Take a couple of these belly breaths, knowing that at any time here, you can close down your eyes. You can leave your hand on your belly or move it back to your knee at any time. Keep doing those belly breaths and we'll settle in with an intention. For an intention today, I invite you to bring in some thoughts about community and connection and compassion. We're all going through crazy times. We're all facing different stresses. And dare I say, we might feel separated from our community. So might we use this time to send a little love out to the other people in our community, whether it's other people practicing or not, loved ones in your life who need a little extra love. And we'll think about connection, ways that even in these crazy times, we can still feel connected to people in our lives, checking in with other people. And then compassion. Might we focus on similarities and being patient with each other and try to come more from a place of compassion and more from a place of love in our lives. And with this intention, I invite you to close your eyes, find your breath, and we'll settle in here. These last few moments here, take a little scan of your body, check in with your face and your jaws, and if you're holding any tension, try to release that tension. Maybe find an open mouth exhale or a lion's breath, soften through the jaws and release any stress you have. Now 
Then we'll all start to open our eyes back up to a soft gaze. Take those shoulders up and then back in, release them down. Next inhale, we'll take the hands out to the side. Draw those hands up towards the ceiling as you bring the palms together. And exhale, bring it down to heart center. We'll do that two more times. Big inhale breath as we take it out. Reach through the fingertips, lengthening through the spine. And then exhale, drawing some energy towards our heart space. One more time. This time we're going to add a spinal twist. So inhale and take your hands high. On the exhale, you're going to twist to your right. Left hand goes to the right knee. Right hand is behind you for a kickstand. And when we twist, inhale, get a little bit taller. And then exhale into your twist. Do that a couple times. Inhale, create some space through your spine. And then exhale, start to look all the way over that left shoulder. I'm sorry, right shoulder. Gently start to drill the chin down through the center of the chest and then glance over the left shoulder for a moment. Take a breath here and then we'll slowly reverse back to where we came. Chin down through center of the chest. Look over that right shoulder one more time. Inhale, take the hands up overhead. This time we'll exhale and twist to the left. Right hand to left knee, left hand back behind you. Inhale, create a little bit of space as you exhale and twist to the left. Do that at least one more time. First, finding some space and then twisting and glancing all the way over that left shoulder. Chin now slowly goes down through the center of the chest. And we'll glance over the right shoulder for a moment. And then reverse it, chin back down through center. And glance over that left shoulder one more time. And we'll inhale, take those hands all the way back up through center. Exhale and cactus your arms. We'll do that two more times. Big inhale, extend through the fingertips. And exhale, cactus. One more time. This time we'll inhale and take our hands overhead. Exhale, start to bring the hands down to the mat in front of you as you roll over the knees. And we'll start to move into tabletop shape and we'll do some pat counts. If you have a blanket and want to give the knees a little love, a little patting, you can open it up. And as you start to find your tabletop shape, take a moment, spread your hands, bring your knuckles together and remind yourself all four of your knuckles should always be placed on the mat. So place those knuckles, fingers are spread, ground through the fingertips, shoulders are just above the hands, hips are above the knees and when you're ready, inhale, take it through your cow pose and exhale, take it through your cat pose. Start to move here with your breath. Take it back and forth between these poses. And know that when you would like, you can get a little organic. You can take those hips a little side to side. Take the spine a little left and right. You can make some circular motions throughout the spine. And any time you would like to incorporate a big open mouth exhale or a lion's breath on that cat's breath or on that cat pose, go for it. Hips can gently come back towards the feet. Take it a little side to side and get into those side bodies. Just try to have fun with it for a few breaths. There's no wrong answers when you're doing your cat cows. As long as it feels good, go for it. And really, as long as we're going through this class and practicing, might that be your motto? If we do anything in class that doesn't feel good for your body, no, you don't have to do it. Do what feels good to you. Listen to your body. Respect your body. Mm -hmm. 
You can take a couple more breaths here. But when you're ready, we're going to transition into child's pose. You can keep the blanket under your knees should you wish. You can also gently set it, set it out of the way. And for a child's pose, we're going to bring the big toes together to touch. Feet flat on the floor. Knees are going to go out wide. Hips can come all the way back to the feet. And then start to walk those hands out and release the forehead down to the mat. Now your option here, if you have some funny things that might happen with your knees, you can always do melting heart or puppy pose. So a great option here is to keep the hips over the knees and then walk the hands out and allow the forehead to come down. Whichever pose you choose, we'll take a couple breaths here and I invite you to put a little emphasis on your exhale breath. Think about your exhale breath and drawing your low belly in and up as you exhale. Really try to exhale all your air out and then replace that with some nice fresh oxygen. We'll do at least five breaths here, wherever you are. This next breath, you're going to exhale everything out as you start to press into your hands. And then as you start to inhale, start to bring yourself back up out of the pose. Start to connect through your hands as you bring the knees back in line with the hips and tuck those toes under. When you are ready, we're lifting those hips up and back for our first downward facing dog. In this first down dog, you can pedal those legs out. Think about pressing through the knuckles as you lift up through low belly and hips. Ears come in between the biceps as you draw in the energy of your armpits and the rib cage. Next breath, take a big open mouth exhale. Now we're going to think about moving to the top of our mat. So find a little bend in the knees and know that you can walk, you can step, or you can take a little hop to the front of your mat. Once you get there, we're going to inhale and lift part way, coming into a flat back, and then exhale and fold it back down. We'll do this two more times. Inhale, come up to your flat back, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale. This time, exhale, take it into a rag doll forward fold. So hands can come to the floor, hands can go to the elbows, but start to release the crown of the head towards the floor, and just release and soften through the neck, taking some yeses and some noes. You can gently sway a little bit left or a little bit right. You can also take the hands up to the low back and extend those hands away from you for a big neck and shoulder opener. Wherever you are, whatever you choose, we'll do a couple breaths here. Pedal the legs out, starting to press into one heel. Straightening just a little bit to start to wake up those hamstrings. The hands are up above you. Start to release them down to the mat. Next inhale breath, we'll take it back up through that flat back. And exhale, fold it back down. Hands come to the shins as we now inhale. Start to bring it all the way up. Take your time as you come up. You can walk your hands up the body. And then inhale, take it all the way up. And exhale, bring it down through heart center. We'll meet in Tadasana, or mountain pose. As you find your mountain pose, look for 
your feet to be just under your hips and for those pinky toes to be parallel with your outer heel. So sometimes that means you just have to bring those feet in just a little bit. Lift and spread the toes and then set those toes back down. Try to grip the mat from pinky to big toe and get heavy in those heels. Draw that energy up the body as you find your mula bandha. And your mula bandha is drawing in the energy around your hips. You can draw your low belly in. Find a little lift to your chest and then draw your rib cage in. Take the shoulders up, take them back, release them down. Palms come forward as you send some energy out through those fingertips. And then crown of the head reaches towards the ceiling as that chin ever so slightly comes in. Take a big breath here. Inhale, hands come high, join the palms. Exhale, bring it down through heart center. Inhale, hands go high. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, hands go high and with a gentle bend to the knees, exhale, lead with your heart forward, fold. Inhale, lift part way, come up to your flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, step it all the way back to plank pose. We're going to take a gentle path to a sun salutation. So we'll plant the hands, and we're all going to drop down to those knees. If you want to keep those knees lifted, go for it. Otherwise, we're planting the hands, dropping the knees, tucking those elbows in, and drawing the energy into our low belly and our mula bandha. When we exhale, we're bringing the elbows in. As we exhale, lead it down with the chest and the chin. Lower the bum, reach each one of those legs behind you as the tops of the feet come in contact with the mat. Hands are by your sides. Inhale, bringing it up to cobra, and exhale, release it down. And we're gonna roll our cobra here. So go with your breath, trying to keep the elbows close to the body, inhaling as you take it up, and exhaling as you take it down. Next time you come up, we're going to pause in our cobra. And you have choices. You can keep your hands right where they are. You can energetically draw the hands towards you and reach your chest forward just to try to lengthen out through the spine. You can also take those hands to the low back, clasp the hands, and reach them away from you. Feel free to glance off to the sides, to take the ear to the shoulder, and to find some little neck rolls. Roll a little from side to side. Start to come back to a neutral place. If your hands are behind you, start to release them back down towards the mat. Here we're going to tuck the toes under and we're going to go up just how we came down. So we're going to find a little lift in the bum, squeeze the elbows in, and first press it up to that knees down plank, and then hips all the way up and back to downward facing dog. Press into the hands, ground through the knuckles, draw the energy in for the armpits and the rib cage. lift through low belly and hips, and feel free to walk it out for a couple breaths. And then we can lift through the heels and maybe just start releasing those heels a little bit down towards the mat. And we'll start to think about coming to the top of the mat. Find a little bend to the knees and know that you can walk, you can step, you can hop any way you'd like to get there. We'll exhale to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift part way. And exhale, fold it back down. Inhale, take it all the way up. Take as much time as you need. Hands come out and up. And exhale, bring it down through heart center. Inhale, take the hands high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift part way. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank pose. Now this is where you can always drop down to the knees. No, you always have options, otherwise you can keep those knees high. Elbows are in, press back through the heels, squeeze that mula bandha in, crown of the head is coming forward. When you take it down, we'll exhale, elbows close to the body, lead it down with chest and chin. 
Flip the tops of the feet onto the mat. And once again, we're gonna roll those cobras. Inhale as you take it high. And exhale as you release it down. Exhale, release it all the way down. Bring those hands out in front of you. And we're gonna lift alternate leg and arc. So draw the energy in of the low belly. Next time you inhale, lift the left leg and the right arm. Exhale, release it down. Inhale, lift left arm and right leg. Exhale it down. Keep going at your pace and as you lift, spread the toes, spread the fingers and reach them away from each other. As you're doing this, think of the energy coming from your core and then radiating out, radiating out through your body. Think about length through the spine and space. Last time, release it down. And then we'll bring the hands down on top of each other for crocodile pose. You're going to let the forehead rest on your hands. And should you wish, you can also bend the knees and take some organic motion with the legs. Start to release those feet back down. Tuck your toes under as the hands come back to the side of the ribcage. You can always take the knees down option to go up. Otherwise, start to push it up. Exhale those hips all the way up and back into downward facing dog. Maybe a gentle pedal. Then start to release through the heels. Press into the hands. Lift through low belly and hips. Inhale, take the right foot high. Reach through that right heel. Reach through the toes. Open the hip, right foot off to the left. Try to keep the shoulders square. Glance at the hands for a moment, and then ears back in between the bicep. If you want to add a little to it, take some raises on that left foot, and make some circular motions with that right ankle. Breathe. Release that left ankle down or left heel down, straighten the hips out, and now exhale, you're drawing that right foot all the way through, and we're setting up for high lunge. Spread the toes, press into both heels, draw the mula bond and the belly in, inhale it as you take it up to high lunge. Settle into heels and hips, roll the shoulders down the back, lift through the chest, draw the ribs in, draw the low belly in, reach through the fingertips. Breathe. Another big inhale breath here. As we exhale, take the hands forward and then take the hands back behind you. We're going to do this a couple times. Inhale and take those hands back high. Exhale, bring them forward behind. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, bring it back up. Pause here. As we exhale, you're turning it into warrior two. Drop and pivot the back ankle as you open into your warrior two. Check that front knee is over that ankle, and it's tracking your second toe. Take the shoulders down the back, and for a moment, take the biceps up, palms up, and then rotate it forward. Do that a couple times. Find some nice rotation in your shoulders. And then biceps up, shoulders down, and then twist those palms down. Take a big breath here. Next inhale, we'll reverse our warrior. Front hand goes up as we tilt it back. Exhale, right elbow comes down to that right knee for extended side angle. As you push that elbow into the knee, open the chest up towards the sky. Left hand can reach straight up or it can go at an angle over your ear. Keep that connection with your feet. Feel from the inner heel to the outer heel, from pinky toe to big toe, and breathe. Inhale that left hand straight overhead. We're gonna turn this into triangle pose. So start to press into the front leg and press more into the ball of that front foot as you bring that front leg towards straight. Right hand can go on the shin, can come down to the foot, it can go down to the mat. If you have blocks at home, feel free to get out those blocks. Draw the energy into your hips. 
Keep pressing through those legs. Reach up through that left hand. Feel your spine Try to get a little bit longer as the crown goes away from the hips. Try to straighten out and lengthen through the spine. One more big breath here. And then we'll bend that front knee. Inhale, take it all the way up and back. Reverse your warrior. Exhale, cartwheel those hands all the way down to the mat. Step it back to downward facing dog. Take a little pedal. Release the heels down, lift through the hips. Next exhale, breath any way you want to get there. Walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift part way. Exhale, fold. Inhale, you're taking it all the way up. Exhale, bring it down through heart center. Inhale, take the hands high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift part way. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank pose. As always, you can drop those knees down, listen to your body. Ground through your hands, shoulders towards the hips. Nice long neck, long spine, reaching through those heels. Take a big breath here. As we exhale it down, elbows come in, lead it down with the chest and the chin. Tops of the feet come onto the mat. Find three rolling cobras. Once you release it down from that third one, we'll start to set up for a locust pose. I like to rotate a little bit on my hips and find those hip pointers, draw the low belly in, kind of bring some awareness to the mula banda. Arms are reaching out in front of you. When you're ready on the inhale, we're lifting arms and legs. Spread fingers and toes, reach them in opposite directions away from you and continue to breathe. One more big breath here, you got this. And exhale, release it down. Find crocodile pose for a moment. Rest your forehead, take some organic motion with the legs and soften through the low back. Start to release those feet back down to the mat. We'll tuck the toes under and we'll bring the hands back to the sides of the rib cage. Take it through the knees down plank should you like. Otherwise, we're meeting a downward facing bow. Find your down dog and take a couple breaths here. Next exhale breath, we'll think about starting to make our way to the top of the mat any way you want to get there on an exhale breath when you are ready. Inhale, lift part way. Exhale, fold. Inhale, take it all the way up nice and slow. Hands go out and up. And exhale, bring it down through heart center. Take a moment, shake it out. Excuse me while I have a sip of water. Feel free to do the same. So we're going to move into chair pose, but we're going to take it through that part way lift. So start with your Tadasana. I'm going to take the side view on this one. Start with your Tadasana. Lift and spread the toes. Grip the mat with the toes. Start to get heavy and balanced in your heels and draw that energy up your body. Inhale, take your hands high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift part way. If you have blocks, you can use blocks. I'm assuming most people don't have blocks at home, so hence I'm not really using blocks, so hands can come up to the shins. And while you're here, you really want to find your flat back. So think about sitting bones going back behind you, 
crown of the head is going in front of you, but just for a moment, most of us have a little rounding when we have our flat back. So think about your cow pose. Think about reaching through the sitting bones and gently lifting up through your chest. Very often that will help us come and find our flat back. And then you can take the glance back down towards the floor. Energetically, you're gonna sit a little bit further back in your heels, a little bit further back in your hips. And then energetically, you're going to try to widen your feet. They're not going to move. You're just going to press your feet to the sides. Sit back in your heels. Sit back in your hips. All of that, hopefully, has found all sorts of lovely muscles going on. Engage. Feel the mulabanda. Draw that low belly in. And then hands are coming out. And we'll inhale. Take it up to chair pose. You should always be able to see your toes in chair pose. So if you can't see your toes, better to have a shallow chair where you're sitting back. Sit back in the heels, sit back in the hips, grip the mat with the toes, lift through chest, shoulders down the back, and breathe. And then we're gonna take some big detoxifying breaths, some big letting go breaths, swinging the arms back behind us. Inhale, reach through your fingertips. Exhale, sweep the arms back. Inhale them up. Exhale them back. Inhale, let go. You can do open mouth exhales, anything that feels good. We'll do about five more. Last two. Last one. This time, inhale, hands high. Exhale, take the hands back, palms down. Check in with the feet again. Shoulders are moving away from the ears. Drinking bird pose. Come onto those tippy toes. You're supposed to wobble in this pose. Lift the heels. Use the low belly. Keep some lift. Palms are face down. Energetically, again, you can try to widen through the feet and find all sorts of other extra muscles in your legs. Take at least one more breath here. And one more. And then we'll lift, lower the heels, lift the hands, exhale, rags all forward, full. Take your moment here. Hands can come to the mat, elbows, Low back and extend away from you, but we'll breathe here for a few breaths. Soften through the neck. Take some yeses and some noes. Take a little left or some little right. The hands are high, start to release them back low. Next time you exhale, really draw that low belly in and start pressing into your heels. Find a little lift through those sitting bones. Activate those hammies a little bit. And then release that. Inhale, bring it into a part way lift. And exhale, forward fold. This time you're coming all the way up. Inhale, take your time. Nice and slow. More inhale, take the hands up, low the head. And exhale, bring it down. Inhale, take the hands high. Exhale, draw the ribs and the low belly in as you cactus. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, the hands up, connect through the palms. And exhale, bring those hands down. And we're going to start with a... Uh, Hopefully a favorite balancing pose for many people, and then just a nice classic tree pose. So we always start with Tadasana when we balance. We always start with this connection of our feet, spreading the toes, feeling that connection, getting heavy in the heels, and you can go a little left, a little right on the heels. But hopefully, ultimately, you come to a place where you can find all the four corners of your feet, and you start to ground, grow your roots, dare I say, into the ground below you. Then energy starts to come up. You can gently lift the kneecaps, draw the mula banda and the belly in. Find the lift to the rib to the chest. Draw the ribs in. Shoulders up, back and down. First stage in, rib, in uh, tree pose, we're going to balance on that left side, and we're just going to open the right side. You're going to open the knee out to the side. 
Toes can stay connected and you can make a little kickstand. This is your first step of tree pose. And know that you can always go and stand next to a wall. The wall is a great prop in this practice. So feel free to use a wall if you like to use a wall. Otherwise, know that you can lift that foot up to the calf. No, we always avoid the knee. Don't ever put pressure on your joints. So next option would be bringing that foot all the way up to your thigh. You're trying to get that right knee to go straight out towards the side. So if it's out front, gently pressing that right knee back, being parallel with your plank. Press into that standing leg. Draw some of that energy up the body. Release the shoulders down. If you're feeling it, inhale and grow some branches. Hands come out to the sides. Roll the shoulders down the back. We'll take a breath or two here. And one of the things that always helps with balancing is smiling. So if you're not doing so already, soften through your face, curl up the edges of your mouth. Take one more big breath here, reach through those fingertips. On the exhale, bring those hands together and we'll start to bring them down and we'll start to release that foot. Give it a little shake, shake. Come back to your Tadasana. We're doing the same thing on the other side. But as always, we start with the feet. Check in with the toes, heels. Bring it up the body. Find your mountain pose first. Smile. We're going balancing on the right side this time, opening that left knee out to the side, knowing you can start with that little kick stance. This is a great place to be. Put a hand against the wall if that makes you feel good, perfectly fine. Otherwise, balance from your core and when you are ready, left foot can come up to the calf. Left foot can go all the way up to that thigh. Check in that that left knee is trying to go straight out to the side. Press into your standing foot as you draw that energy of the body one more time. And maybe just maybe inhale and grow some branches. Reach through those fingertips, bring a smile onto your face and feel grateful. We're lucky to have this practice in our lives and in such a crazy time, what a great format that we can all share this practice with each other. So thank you guys for joining us. I haven't been looking at who's commenting. Know that I am so appreciative that you are here. Take one more breath, reach through your fingertips. On the exhale, start to bring the palms together and then start to bring those hands down. When you're ready, release that foot. Take a little shaky shake. We're going to take it all the way down to our backs. If you don't like squat pose, take the safest way down to your back. If you like squat pose, come to a place where you can ultimately rock and roll onto your mat and have space behind you. Feet go just a little bit wide, toes go out to the side, and for squat pose, we drop those hips down. As you drop it down, elbows can come inside the knees. Knees gently press against the elbows, soften through the shoulders. Hands can come together in prayer pose for a moment. And just for a moment, kind of allow the head to release and allow the forehead to come down and for your third eye to connect with your thumb. And just take a breath here. Release those hands down, and now we're rocking and rolling it all the way onto the back. Be as careful as you need to. Come onto your side if you need to, but if the rock and roll is in your practice, release the bum down and rock it and roll it a couple of times. Little rock and roll action. Loosen, soften into the spine. Give those muscles some love. And then take it all the way down. And we'll take it into happy baby pose. These are going to come out towards the side. Soles of the feet start to come up. And we can reach inside the knees for the toes, for the feet. And you can start to get a little organic. Take it a little left and a little right. You can encourage the knees down towards the floor. You can press the feet into the hands. You can straighten one as you bend the other. Take a couple breaths here of anything that feels good. And then we're going to do a pose that I kind of made up. And this pose is called cockroach pose. And the idea here is that from our backs, we're going to take our hands and our feet into the air. And for one minute, 
we're going to shake. And the reason is to let go, release stress, release tension. Tony's going to help us through it. You got one minute. Go. Shake arms, shake legs, shake it all. Just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it as much as you can. Keep going. You're about halfway there. Shake the arms, shake the legs, shake something you're not shaking. Let go of something. About 15 more seconds. Ten. You got this. And five more seconds. Three, two, one, and release it down. Draw the knees into the chest. Give the knees a little squeeze. Take a moment of some yogi's choice. You can take some little left and right rocking motions. You can make some circular motions with your hips or with your knees. Circle one way and then the other way. You can let the knees separate. Bring them towards you, away. Let them go away from you together. And reverse that. And then we'll start to release the feet down to the mat. And we're going to do a little core exercise. First, to find some energy in the core, roll your pelvis forward, ground through your sitting bones, and then draw the belly in and press the back into the mat to just find some of these muscles all along your core. Keeping the sitting bones grounded, take those feet straight up in the air. Reach through the heels, spread the toes. Toes are coming back towards you. Hands are coming straight up. Inhale here. On the exhale, you're crunching it up to the outside of the left leg as you lower the right leg. Inhale, take it back to where you started. Exhale, crunch it up to the outside of the right leg as you lower the left leg. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, open the legs, take it to the center. Exhale, everything out. Inhale, back to where you started. Exhale, right leg lowers, crunch it to the left. Inhale, exhale, left leg lowers, crunch it to the right. Inhale, exhale to the center. Keep going. You got this. You look great. One more set. You got this. Last one. Exhale everything out. Squeeze that belly. Inhale back to where we started and then go back to some yogi's choice. Rock it, roll it. Happy baby. A little left, a little right. And we're going to take a spinal twist. So release those feet back down one more time. Lift your hips, take them to the left and set them back down. Draw the knees into your chest and then let the knees go all the way off to the right. Hands or arms come out to the side to make a cactus or a T-shape. And do your best to try to get both of those shoulder blades on the ground. So maybe just wiggle that right shoulder blade just a little off to the right and try to bring some balance to both of those shoulder blades. Breathe. Feel free to close your eyes here. If you want to take it a little further, you can straighten that top left leg and grab a hold of that big toe with your peace fingers. We're going to do just a couple more breaths here, and I invite you to put a little emphasis on your exhale breath. And for these exhale breaths, think of all the things going on in your abdomen. Try to kind of think of it as 
exhaling and kind of squeezing some of the blood out of your internal organs so that when you inhale, they can just be flooded with fresh oxygen. Exhale, draw the belly in. Exhale, squeeze everything out. Big inhale. And then we'll start to think about coming out of the pose. We'll draw the knees back into the chest. You can release the feet down, lift those hips, take them to the right this time, set them down, draw those knees back in, and this time, drop them off to the left. Possibly that right shoulder just lifted, so try to scooch that left shoulder a little bit more to the left, and do your best to balance out through your shoulder blades. Hands are out to the side, shoulders are soft, palms are face up, T-shape with the arms or a cactus shape, either way is fine. Breathe. If you took the extra credit on the other side, feel free to extend the top leg for a couple breaths. Grab hold of that big toe with your peace fingers. Release the top leg and come back to a couple nice powerful breaths here. One more. Exhale everything out on this breath. And then we'll start to bring those knees back through center. Drop the feet back down to the mat. Shimmy yourself back into alignment. And take a moment of some yogi's choice. Take a little rock or a little roll. Take a little side to side. A little circle of the knees. And we'll set up for figure four. Feet are connected with the mat. Inhale the right foot up and then exhale. Cross that right foot over the left knee. You're spreading your toes and drawing the toes equally from pinky to big toe back towards that knee. So straight ankle. Some people kind of sickle sometimes and do something like that. So straighten your ankle. Right hand gently presses that knee away from you for starters. And this is a great place to stay. But of course, if you ultimately want to take this pose a little further, you can thread the needle, draw that left knee towards you, either clasp behind the thigh or in front of the shin. And what's really nice here is to then take your right elbow and stick it in that right knee and try to find a little action where you can press the right knee away from you as you're pulling that left knee towards you. And breathe. Circle the ankles. If you want a little point of flex action, that's fine. Allow for some softening the body. Allow for some letting go of anything you've been holding on to. Let's do just a couple more breaths here. this last breath. If you want just a little crunch, feel free to exhale and draw the forehead up to the chin and just squeeze the low belly as you exhale everything out. And then inhale, release it, uncross it. Before we go to the other side, toe heel your feet wide and windshield wiper. Let it go left and let it go right. Just take them back and forth a couple times. You can keep this action going, or you can release to one side and just stay at one side for a moment. You can keep your feet where they are, or you can place the bottom foot on the outside of the top knee to take it just a little bit further. You just did that. Take it to the other side. Keep yourself balanced. Start 
to bring the knees back to a neutral place. Bring the feet back to hip distance apart. Next inhale, you'll take that left foot high and then exhale, cross it over that right knee. Spread the toes, draw them back to the knee. Left hand presses the left knee away from you. Take a breath here. Check in with that ankle, that it's not sickling. Know that you can stay right where you're at. Otherwise, feel free to take it a little further and thread the needle. Draw that right knee towards you. Maybe find that action of pressing the left knee away from you while the right comes towards you. Feet can stay flexed. Feet can point and flex. Circles with the ankles is fine. We'll do a couple breaths here. like that little crunch next time you exhale really exhale everything out find that little crunchy motion and then release it down so our next pose is Shavasana if you would like to move directly into Shavasana you can but take a couple moments and if you would like to do some yogi's choice of shoulder stand or plow pose or anything else is in your practice that I've missed feel free if you have a bolster around roll to the side and come back up to a seated place. I'm going to give you the option to do a nice supported Shavasana. So again, your bolster can also be a cushion from your couch. It can be a couple pillows, but something that you can take and put right at your low back. And for starters, feet are flat on the floor. Gently roll that pelvis forward. Bolster is right behind you. And the idea is you're going to find a little bit of length to your spine. And then you're going to reel softly. Just kind of release down over your cushions or your bolsters. And bring it all the way down. Adjust your back or your hips should you need to. And we're going to bring it into cobbler's pose. So we're going to bring those feet together. And we're going to let the knees go out wide. If you do this and it's super intense in your thighs, you can put blankets, you can put blocks, you can put a couple books under those knees to give it a little relief. So we're going to settle in here. Know that you can keep the cobbler's pose for as long as you would like to, but at some point your body might start talking to you and you might want to let it go. So anytime in your Shavasana that you want to release the cobbler's pose whenever you're ready, you're just going to lengthen out those legs and let your legs be long on your mat. For now, in cobbler's pose, or keeping your legs straight should you prefer, this is your Shavasana. So ultimately, however you want to get comfortable. And if you're not using the bolster, just lay down on your mat, lay down on your floor, wherever you want. Take one hand or both hands to the belly. You can do one on the belly and one on the heart. And we're going to start to go back to some of those belly breaths. So as you inhale, feel the belly expand under your hands. And as you exhale, feel the belly contract. You're going to take a few belly breaths as we start to settle into Shavasana. And I invite you to bring our intention back into your heart space. Might you think about the community around you? Connection, connection to yourself, connection to that community, connection to life around you, and compassion. Might we all have more compassion for ourselves, for each other? Might we be patient to each other? And know anytime you lose that place of love that it's always inside of you, all you have to do is come back to it. Whenever you're ready, let those hands float down to your sides. I love an eye mask for Shavasana. So if you have an eye mask, you can use a blanket or anything else as well. Feel free to use an eye mask. And we'll start to release into our Shavasana pose. A little struggle, Romeo, in the streets of Serenade. They and everybody low with the love song that it made. 
finds the street light, steps out of the shades, something like you and me, babe. How about it? Julia says, hey, it's Romeo. You nearly give me a heart attack. Just underneath the window, she's singing, hey, la, my boyfriend's back. You shouldn't come around here singing up to people like that. Anyway, what you gonna do about it? Juliet, the dice were loaded from the start. And I bet you exploded in my heart. And I forget, I forget a movie song. When you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong, Juliet. We come up on different streets, both were streets of shame, both dirty, both mean. Yes, and the dreams were just the same. I dream your dream for you, now your dream is real. How can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals? Well, you can fall the chains of silver. You can fall for chains of gold. You can fall for pretty strangers and the promises they hold. Promise me everything. Yeah, you promised me a thick and thin. Yeah, now you just say, oh, Romeo. Yeah, well, I used to have a scene with him. Julia, we made love. You used to cry. You said, I love you like the stars above. And I love you till I die. There's a place for us. You know the movie song. When you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong. Juliet. Can't do the talk. Like the talk on the TV. Can't do a love song where it was meant to be. I can't do everything, but I do anything for you. I can't do anything except be in love with you. All I did was miss you the way we used to be. All I did was keep the beat in bad company. All I'll do is kiss you. Feel the bars of rain. Julie, I do the stars with you. And it's like Juliet. We may love you, you used to cry. You said I love you like the stars above. I love you till I die. There's a place for us. You know the movie song. When you're gonna realize. It was just that the time was wrong, Julian. And a love struck Romeo, plays the streets of serenade, laying everybody low with the love song that he made, and he finds his street light. Steps out of the shades says something like you and me, babe. How about it? You and me, babe. How about it? You and me, babe.
you haven't done so already, begin to lengthen out your legs. Begin to deepen your breath as you slowly start to come back to the present moment. By all means, if you can stay here, feel free to stay right where you're at. As we come out of Shavasana, we'll take our time and we'll gently start to wiggle the fingers. We come back to this place of love in our hearts. We move our bodies from this place of love, from this place of patience, and from this place of compassion. You're ready to let those motions get a little bit larger. Hands circling, just ankles. When you're ready, take a big old cat stretch. Reach your hands overhead. Feel into some of that new space that you have created throughout your body. Feel how nice your spine feels. If you have an eye mask or a weight bag or anything like that, feel free to set it to the side whenever you're ready. We'll all gently roll onto either one of our sides now. So I'm gonna roll onto my left side and make a little pillow for your head for a moment and just take a moment here on your side. Take a breath for yourself, draw some energy in. And as you start to come up from your Shavasana, you can place your hands on the mat and carefully start to press yourself. Keep your eyes to a soft gaze for another moment as we are all start to come back and meet in a comfortable seated place. Feel into those sitting bones, sit nice and tall, bring your hands to heart center. As we bow our heads over our hands, we'll practice some gratitude. So we'll take a few breaths here and I invite you to bring into your heart space a few of those things in your life that you are the most grateful for. spirit within me honors that same spirit within each one of you. Thank you so much for joining us for this class today. Namaste. Namaste, Tony. Thank you for joining us. Namaste, Megan. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. We're going to do this Mondays in May at 5.30 and see how it goes. So feel free to comment, give us any feedback. I hope you could hear well and all of those things. So feel free to give some feedback. But most importantly, know that we love you and we miss you. And even if your friends far, far away, we're thinking of you and we're connected. If you ever need anything, people are here. People care about you. Thank you. <laughs>